Hi, I'm joined here today to talk about AI in supply chain management by Jeff Alpern, VP of Product for Noodle AI. Jeff, welcome. Thank you. Uh, so we want to talk to you about artificial intelligence in supply chain management, which obviously is a very hot topic. And unfortunately, there's a lot of uh, nonsense being talked about it at mm -hmm. the moment. And mm -hmm. um, I uh, saw your presentation earlier and you talked more sense than I'd seen in a while. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so I wanted to start off by asking you, what is the current state of AI in supply chain management? Yeah, the current state of AI in supply chain management is it's a box to check. I think that a lot of people have put window dressing on what they already had, and they call it AI or ML because there's no firm definition of what AI or ML is. I think that fundamentally in the supply chain space, we have an innovator's dilemma where the existing companies have made large investments in things that have worked very well, operations research foundation of their optimizations, demand planning systems, things like that. Now we've got fundamentally new technologies mm. that have come in. They're very marketable. Mm. They are very difficult to figure out how to use, mm. how to implement. And at the same time, there's a lot more room for improvement in the existing technologies as well. And so, of course, you, you can't blame a business for doing this. They kind of look at it and they say, oh, well, there's not a great definition of what AI is. Let's find a new algorithm. Let's put it in and say that we have AI to make sure that we're, we're in the marketplace. But truly, I think that there is a quite large gap between where the industry is today and where it can and will be in the future, given all the technological breakthroughs that we've seen over the last few, a few, a few years. Right. I really like that you talked about how there's a need for sort of new math and that a lot of uh, supply chain managers are, first of all, unaware of that. And even if they do get that, then there might be a tendency to just dump a new model on their planners yeah. without really giving them the tools to, to use those models. Yeah, I think two things. Number one, the way that people have been talking about things like generative AI and chat GPT and things like that, stuff that's in the news and supply chain planning is very technology first, which is wrong. I think people look at a large language model and say, how can I apply a language model to supply chain? That is the easy part. The hard part is problem framing. Right. We have to understand what are we actually trying to do here, right? What problem are we actually trying to solve and how does the technology solve it? So if you look at ChatGPT or Dolly or one of these things, they're doing three fundamental things. There's prediction, there's generation, and there's reinforcement and learning, right? In ChatGPT, you're predicting and generating text. What is the next best piece of text mm. to write out? And they're reinforcing that based on human feedback and real text in the real world. If you break it down to that level, you can see that within supply chain, you've got prediction, generation, and reinforcement learning issues. You've got to predict and generate based on my current state of the supply chain, where do I want to go to next? Mm -hmm. And then you need to learn and reinforce what good looks like using some heuristics and reinforcement learning models. Right. It's not a fundamentally different process, right. but you have to apply the problem statement of supply chain to those technologies rather than the uh, other way around. And I think that's been a major part of the problem. And so when people think about probabilistic planning, they think about, okay, my demand has a probability, mm -hmm. my supply has a probability, that's great. Here's a probability for my planner. They're approaching it technology first. Oh, I can generate probabilities, therefore you'll be able to use probabilities. That's not true. There are a number of things you've got to do along the way. That's why we work so much with these heuristics, like I talked about in, in, in the discussion, expected value at risk. You take a probabilistic curve mm -hmm. and you can compress it into easily to, easy to understand piece of information. What is the expected value based on the probabilities that right. you've got? Right, and it's, it's really about you know how much would an overstock cost me mm -hmm. as opposed to an out of stock? Mm -hmm. And often those two things are an order of magnitude or orders of magnitude different so that you're better to err on the side of overstocking for some businesses and and not not for others. Mm -hmm. Can you explain um, a little bit, because uh, you know this is a supply chain uh, audience, what do you mean by heuristics? So the heuristic is a decision-making aid. And so in this case, 
you know, we're going to take that probabilistic distribution, we're going to compress it down into a single number, and then we need to have some assumptions that we build on top of that. For instance, like we said um, in, in that discussion, if we're going to get to um, what is the actual value of an out of stock, you've got to make a number of assumptions in there. And so a heuristic is just a shortcut to get there. Right. right? We take the probabilistic curve, we compress it into one number, and we make some assumptions to get something else out. Almost like a little algorithm, just to help nice. your mind sort of say, okay, I don't have to process this entire probabilistic curve. I can work with the number that's in front of me. Yeah. Let the machine do that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then let the person or the machine and reinforcement learning work with the much simpler compressed information. Right. So, w what are the roles of these emerging technologies in, in supply chain? I mean, does ChatGPT actually have anything to do with supply chain management? Because it's language based, really. Isn't yeah. It? We don't think about it that way. <laughs> okay. We look at this, we employ, so, so Noodle, my company, uh, we started as an AI first company. Mm -hmm. um, we started technology first and we realized that no, we've got to go problem first. And so, like I said, you have to shift the paradigm. Is there a role for chat GPT? Maybe, mm -hmm. but you're gonna have to train it on supply chain information, Yes. right? Fundamentally, like I said, breaking it down into these chunks what is it actually doing? The prediction, the generation, the reinforcement allows you to frame the problem in a way that supply chain planning systems c can be built around. Right. But taking a large language model and just kind of saying that it's going to work on supply chain, it, that's not a thing that's going to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was my impression too. Yeah. So we're really talking about decision support tools and, and, and a step change perhaps in the sophistication and utility of, th of those tools. Is yes. that right? Yes. Wonderful. So um, what do you think, if we can get to where you have a vision of going with supply chain management and using these technologies, yeah. what impact will that have on people and processes? I think this is one of the most difficult questions that we face. I think um, in the AI space generally, there are a lot of questions about, is it going to take people's jobs? And now with ChatGPT, writer strike going on, all, this, all these sorts of things. It's a very, very pertinent question. At the same time, the only people that currently possess the information required to make good decisions in supply chain are doing so because of gut feel and experience. Right. It's the planners and it's management, right? They're the only ones that can bridge the gap between these deterministic systems we have now and the sort of real world, which is much more complicated. Mm -hmm. So if I think about the role of these supply chain systems going forward, what we would envision is that planners and management are dealing mostly with strategic aspects they are going to be manipulating inputs. They're not going to be choosing algorithms and manipulating right. data and things like that. Yeah. Let the machine do what it's good at. Mm -hmm. The machine will even be able to make some recommendations and probably take some automated actions, but there's enough chaos in the system mm. that the machine is never gonna be able to do every edge case. Sure. If you're completely out of stock because something got stuck in the Suez Canal or you know whatever right. it is and you've gotta bring substitute products in, the AI has never seen that before. It's not going to know. There's going to absolutely be a role for creativity in humans, but it will be a more abstracted role, a more strategic role, and a less sort of on the ground manipulating things, turning dials role. Great. Thank you so much. Would you like to tell us a little bit more about Noodle AI? And sure. What you do. Yeah. So Noodle AI, uh, we are a supply chain SaaS software company. Our intent is to bring these new technologies to the supply chain software space. So we are a system of intelligence that sits on top of planning and ERP systems. We don't compete with planning and ERC, uh, ERP systems. We're agnostic to which planning ERP system anybody has. We just want to make it better. And it is our firm belief that probabilistic planning, these generative techniques are the future of supply chain planning. It's simply a matter of time. It may take a little while given how large the investments are that people have already made, um, but we are building towards the future. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you. So that's a little bit about AI in the supply chain. And I've been here with Jeff Alpern, uh, VP of product for Noodle AI. Thank you for joining us. Bye.